the most beneficent and the most merciful. <clears throat> In the previous lecture, we discussed uh, about the components uh, of a barrage. And uh, I think we uh, discuss the names of all components. Is that? Is that true? Yes, sir. OK, now we will discuss one by one in detail. Huh? And uh, before that, we want to see the this layout uh, of a barrage. Layout of a barrage means the plan of a barrage structure. And uh, if you see, uh, this one is the layout of a barrage. And uh, uh, these two are the guide banks of the uh, barrage. And uh, this is basically, these are basically the uh, main weirs, and these are the under sluice bays. OK, these are called as normal bays and these are under sluice bays. And uh, from you can see that the direction of flow of water is this one and uh, the canal is off taking from which side from right or left? The left left side. Left from side. right. No, 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 no. Uh, this is this is the direction of flow of water. So you should stand in the direction of flow of water and then this canal would be on right side. Am I right? Now please check it again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. No, it's right. OK, so and this guide bank is left guide bank or right bank guide bank. The right, right, guide, right, guide, right, right, guide, right bank. guide bank and this is the left guide bank. OK. And uh, this is structure uh, where we provide the gates uh, to regulate the flow to the canal is known as head regulator of the main canal. All right. And these are the marginal bunds. OK, these are called as the marginal bunds. Again, this would be right or left marginal bund. This one. Right, right sir. One. It's right, right, right margin one. one. And this is the left marginal one. And this is fish ladder. And here this is one wall which is called as divide wall. OK. So these are the some parts visible here. And uh, this is again uh, one detailed layout of a barrage. And uh, here you can see the same things. So this one, this is the direction of flow footer. And so this is the right bank, guide bank. And you know that it's how it is starting. What is its shape? Like hockey shape, OK? And uh, here is also. And if you will take the cross section here, what is the shape of uh, uh, these guide banks are? These are trapezoidal. Maybe multi-layer trapezoidal uh, cross section. OK, and uh, again here this is the divide wall and this is the uh, main canal. This is the head regulator of the main canal. And uh, here marginal burns. These are not shown. The marginal burns should be here. And uh, uh, these are the uh, main base of the barrage and these are the under sluice base of the barrage and this one is a fish ladder. Now we would like to discuss each one by one and before that, yeah, I have sh shown some photographs, <coughs> uh, basically Google images of various barrages. Now this is the plan or layout of the uh, Tonsa barrage. So this one is the barrage. And uh, you can see here. Uh, these are the divide walls. OK, and. Uh, of, and the, this is the direction of flow of water. From top to bottom, so these are the left bank canals. 
So how many canals are being off taken from the left side? How many canals? Can you see? Two, two, two canals. Okay. And this is this is the basically uh, you know the divide wall on the right side. And these two canals are taken off from the right side. And uh, here you can observe these two lines. What they show? These are the fish. Uh, fish ladders. Now this is the Google plan map of the Sakhar barrage. And uh, what is the direction of flow of the river from this to that the north is in this direction and uh, this one is the Sakhar barrage. So if you see uh, closely, you can see this is the, 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 the divide wall here and uh, how many are the canals of taking uh, from the right, uh, from the left side? of the barrage. So sir, this two. Is, those two canals are there. Can you three, see sir. two? Can you see three? Yes, sir. One, two, three. This is the fourth. So there are four canals okay, sir. which are off taking from the uh, left bank. What about the right bank? How many canals are taking off? Three canals. Three. Right? Three. Same. Three canals. So, how many total canals are being taken off? Seven canals. Now, this is the plan view or Google image of Kotri Barrage. You know, this is the you know the last barrage on the River Indus. So, uh, this one is the Kotri Barrage, and this is the direction of flow. And here, it, the river is flowing like that. <coughs> How many canals are being of taken, yeah, taken off from the left side? Two, sir. Two canals. And what about the right side? One. One canal. Okay. Now uh, we want to discuss uh, uh, the longitudinal section of a barrage. Okay. This is the main barrage portion. Number one, what was the number one component? Main barrage portion. So this is the main barrage portion. Uh, which one is uh, upstream side and which is the downstream side? This right one is upstream side. Upstream. Right one. How you you could know it? So water that level is, is high. Water level is higher. So we are raising this level. Huh? This is called as the pond level of the barrage. And uh, so this, this one is the upstream concrete floor of the barrage. This one is the upstream glacis. And this is the crest of the weir. This is the downstream glacis. And this is the downstream concrete float. All right. So if you will see here on the upstream side, on upstream of con upstream concrete floor, what is this one? Here there are some concrete blocks, or there is flexible apron. What do you mean by flexible apron? Of large size stones, those are thrown in the bed. What is the purpose? To prevent the scavering of the bed of the uh, river on upstream of this concrete floor. Now, what is on the downstream side? On the downstream side of the concrete floor, uh, there is there is inverted filter, inverted filter. And uh, after the inverted filter, then we have downstream flexible apron. Flexible apron means the uh, boulders are stones of large size. Those are provided on the bed of the river. The main purpose is to prevent scavering of the bed. All right. Now, 
this is the point uh, on upstream side from where the upstream concrete floor starts. Floor means it's like a slab, concrete slab. And you know here, uh, this is upstream sheet pile. This one is the upstream sheet pile. And here there is downstream sheet pile. So these are sheet piles. And these two sheet piles are called as intermediate sheet piles, okay? So there are basically three types of sheet piles, upstream sheet pile, downstream sheet pile, and intermediate sheet piles. And these are the wells, occasions for foundations, okay, for uh, improving the bearing capacity of the soil while, you know, constructing the uh, this uh, barrage. Okay, now we can go the <coughs> components of the barrage one by one. What was the first component? Main barrage portion. So main barrage portion means it is mainly composed of RCC slab. Uh, like we make uh, uh, roof slabs. So these are the slabs. So it has how many components? Main barrage portion, it has five components. That is the upstream concrete floor, upstream glasses, then the crest, then downstream glasses, then the downstream concrete flow. So these all are mentioned here. Let us discuss the upstream concrete flow. The upstream concrete flow is basically the RCC slab, which is provided between, in between on the upstream of the uh, upstream sheet pile, uh, intermediate sheet pile, and are on the downstream of this. What is this? This is the flexible apron. So this concrete floor is called as upstream concrete flow. What is the main purpose? To protect the middle portion where the piers, gates and bridge are located. So the main purpose of providing this floor is to prevent this portion, middle portion, where there is a weir where there are gates and bridge etc and the piers bridge piers they also rest at this place what is the second crest crest you know is the uh, this part highest part of the weir is called as the crest so it has certain width and uh, on the crest of the weir the gate has to rest if we want to close uh, uh, this uh, the completely uh, then we have to uh, close the gates and the gate bottom where it has to rest it has to rest on the crest actually crest basically uh, is the highest flat portion of the wheel then upstream glasses. What is upstream glasses? So this one. So it is the sloping slab in between the uh, downstream part of the upstream concrete floor and the crest. So this one is called as upstream glasses. Then the next is downstream glasses. So what is downstream glasses? So this one is the sloping RCC slab which connects the uh, crest of the weir with the upstream part or upstream end of downstream concrete floor. So this is the downstream concrete floor and this is its upstream end. So it connects the crest with this and this is called as downstream glasses. And this is very important downstream glasses because here we expect the formation of hydraulic jump. Then what is the next? That is the downstream concrete flow. So this is also built of RCC. And uh, it is constructed so as to contain the hydraulic jump. Now you know the hydraulic jump which will form here, its turbulence will go to certain length downstream. And this downstream concrete floor has to basically receive that turbulence. So if this turbulence goes further downstream, it can damage the 
uh, uh, the you know the bed of the stream. <coughs> so now this was the main barrage portion. Now we have to discuss the sheet piles. So what are sheet piles? Sheet piles are basically made of made of mild steel, and each portion width is about 1.5 to 2 feet, whereas thickness of the plate is about half inches. Okay, so uh, oh, these are the sheet piles, and these are required. Uh, they have the of the required lengths and have grooves. Here they have grooves for interlocking, as there should be no leakage. Uh, so these are the stacks of uh, manufactured sheet piles. You can see here. And here you can see these sheet piles are being driven in the uh, at at the appropriate location for the construction of barrage. And here you can see the, that how this sheet pile is being driven through the hammering. So this is in a mechanical hammer, uh, and with this the sheet pile is being driven. And this is a sheet pile uh, uh, driven sheet pile wall. And the main purpose is to stop the flow of underground water uh, up to that depth. As we have seen that, uh, this one is the upstream sheet pile. So now that is the shape of the sheet pile. So before construction, we uh, drive these sheet piles mechanically into the ground. The main purpose is of these sheet piles is to lengthen the seepage path. You know, the water has to, the subsurface flow uh, otherwise has to flow like that, very underneath the uh, concrete footings. But if we will provide this sheet pile, now the water cannot uh, flow because this will act as a barrier. And then the length of the flow of water increases, length of the path of the flow of water increases. And that is the main purpose. So, so sheet piles are driven into the soil beyond the maximum possible discovered depth. How much should be the, up to what depth, these sheet piles should be driven? Up to what depth? Actually, we have to compute the scour depth. And uh, once we will compute the scour depth, let's say scour depth is coming, uh, and scour depth is always measured with respect to the water surface level. So let's say if it is coming up to here, so the length of the sheet pile should be such that it should be more than that uh, scour depth. So up to which scour depth is going, and those seed piles should be driven even deeper uh, than that. Okay, what is the number? Now, there are several types of sheet piles, as we have already discussed. One is the upstream sheet piles, second are the intermediate sheet piles, and then the downstream sheet pile. What is the upstream sheet pile? And actually, these are the sheet piles, which are dry one in the ground, in the bed of the river, at upstream end of the concrete flow. And what are its functions? To protect the barrage structure from scouring. So this sheet pile protects the barrage structure from scouring. Number two, it lengthens the seepage path. So once the seepage part will length will uh, elongate it, then the uplift pressure on the barrage structure will be reduced. Number two to reduce the uplift pressure on the barrage floor, and number four to confine the sand and hence increase the bearing capacity. Now here, if uh, uh, it is you know in between these two. And you can see that uh, the sheet piles, 
if this is this is upstream sheet pile, this is intermediate sheet pile, then the sand in between will get confined uh, due to which is bearing capacity of the sand will increase. Now, what are the intermediate sheet piles? So actually these are the sheet piles which are provided on the upstream end of upstream concrete floor and downstream end of downstream, uh, oh, sorry, and uh, yeah, these are provided on the downstream end of upstream concrete floor. You see here. So this is the downstream end of upstream concrete floor, and these are provided on upstream end of downstream concrete floor. Okay. So these are called as intermediate sheet piles, and of course they have also the same purposes. They increase the length of the seepage path. They, uh, you know, they increase the bearing capacity because they confine the sand in between, and hence they increase the bearing capacity, and uh, they reduce the uplift pressure. It is a, the same we can discuss here. These are mentioned. These serves as second line of defense because those are in between, huh? on the uh, upstream and downstream sheet piles. They lengthen the seabed path, they reduce the uplift pressure, and they confine the sand, and hence they increase the bearing capacity. What is the downstream sheet pile? Actually, uh, downstream sheet piles are provided on the downstream end of the concrete floor, as you can see here. So this is the sheet pile, all right? And uh, it has a very important function of the downstream sheet pile. Of the first very important function of the downstream sheet pile they to check the exit gradient. Uh, you know, if we are not providing the sheet pile, then ground the, then the subsurface flow has to move in this way. Okay, and due to the sheet pile, it the water has to move like that. So they it they check the uh, exit gradient. and they lengthen the seepage path and they confine the sand and hence to increase the bearing capacity of the soil. So these are the functions of the sheet piles. Now the third component of the barrage is, are the inverted filters and inverted filters, they are provided in between downstream sheet piles and flexible apron. So if you see here the longitudinal section longitudinal section of the barrage. So here this is the downstream end of downstream concrete floor and this is the flexible apron. So th these are the inverted filters. Uh, they consist of uh, six inch sand and over it nine inch coarse sand and then over it nine inch gravel. OK, and then uh, we to protect these gravels, we uh, put concrete blocks of sufficient weight. The sizes of these blocks are four feet by four feet and the depth is about 2.75 feet. So the, the uh, and and about six inch uh, is the slits five to six inch. Uh, these uh, slates or jerrys are left to escape the water. Now, what is its function of the inverted filters? You know that uh, when uh, we close this gate of the uh, barrage, then what happens? Most of the time we have to close the gates of the barrage, um, particularly when there are low flows or average flows because we want to Pond level up to certain height. And then uh, what happens? The head on this side, there is almost nil flow on downstream side or very less flow. So the head across the barrage is very high. So that head uh, causes the seepage flow or the uh, uh, flow for flow of water under 
the barrage structure like this. So when it will exit from this portion because this is concrete floor. So on the downstream of concrete floor, inverted filters are provided as the water should escape and should be should be discharged from the downstream of the concrete floor. But at the same time, the fine sand and fine silt should not move along the uh, when it is it 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 emerges as surface on the surface. So that is the main purpose. Uh, so the length of the filter should be two times downstream sheet pile depth. So, so this length of the of the inverted filter should be twice of the downstream sheet pile length. So length is this depth basically of the sheet pile. And what is its function? As I mentioned you earlier, its function is to check the escape of fine soil particles in the seepage water. As you know, the water has to come like this and from here it has to escape. So it is a filter basically. And uh, the filter in such a way, these are the finest particle, then these are coarser, then further coarser. And that coarse material is then protected by these concrete blocks. And here these are filled with sand. So in this way, so the water can be escaped uh, without uh, taking fine sediments. Uh, uh, if those fine sediments start moving, so it means there would be initially the cavities will be formed and then the whole uh, the soil underneath can be com compacted, consolidated and it may damage this structure, whole structure. Uh, so that's why it's very necessary to provide the inverted filters. Now could you understand what is the function of inverted filter? Uh, yes, sir. OK. Now the fourth is flexible apprents. What are flexible apprents? These are the stones which we provide on the bed and these are provided on both side on the uh, on the bed of the river on both side on upstream side and on downstream side. So a flexible apron is placed downstream of the filter and downstream side where we have to provide flexible apron on the downstream side of the inverted filter and consist of boulders. How boulders? How large? The large enough not to be washed away by the highly likely, uh, by the highest likely water velocity. They, they should not move. They should be of that much large diameter. And their main function is to prevent discover of the bed of the river and to dissipate energy of water because they have a lot of manning roughness or friction uh, due to the boulder shapes. So these flexible apron, they are provided on the upstream side as well as on the downstream side. On the downstream side, where do we provide it? On the downstream of inverted filter. All right. Yes, sir. sir. OK, how much should be the length of the flexible apron on upstream side? How much should be the length of the flexible apron on downstream side? On upstream side, it should be 1.5 times the cover depth. The, the formula of this cover depth we will discuss in the next lecture and uh, two times this cover depth on downstream side. On which side we require longer length of the of the flexible apron. Flexible apron means large size boulders which we provide on the downstream side as well as on upstream side. So where do we require larger length of the flexible apron? Uh, sir, uh, sir. Downstream. On downstream side, sir. 
on downstream side why no oh, super critical uh, because there are a lot of problems and also the high velocity is on the downstream side because the high, where the hydraulic jump has to form on the downstream glasses and the its turbulence may continue for some length so that's why uh, the flexible apron on downstream side is provided longer than on upstream side it is two times the scour depth the scour depth may be from here to here ana right? from here to here this may be the scour depth so double of that and here only 1.5 times of that all right and you know the failure of the hydraulic structures most of the time it starts from downstream side for example if this uh, uh, the uh, this inverted filter is not working properly then the fines uh, will be taken off from here and that is called as undermining okay or piping and once the piping takes place it increases the porosity of the soil under this structure and then the it becomes a lot of porous and a time comes when it's it settle down and then the the hydraulic structure fails usually oh. hydraulic structure they mostly fail their failure starts from the downstream side because the downstream side is more critical as compared to upstream side so flexible apron length is well, is provided longer on downstream side as compared to on okay number 5 are the under sluices what are under sluices these are the base at extreme ends of the barrage adjacent to the canal regulator having lower crest level than ordinary base so under sluices basically are provided in between divide wall and the head regulator of the main canal okay if we are providing now if you see the or our or uh, this figure so these are the under sluice base and these are provided in between the divide wall and head regulator of the main canal so this these are called as under sluice base so their crest level is kept lower as compared to the crest level of the normal base uh if we want to take off off take a canal from this side from the left side as well then we need to provide this divide wall here as well okay once we will provide a divide wall here as well then these uh, would these base would be under sluice base because it would again be, be in between the wide wall and head regulator of the main canal is it clear yes sir yes sir so under sluice base are basically the base which are provided in between the wide wall and guide and uh, head regulator of the main canal okay their crest level of the weir is kept lower as compared to normal base now what are the functions of uh, uh, these now you can see this is the plan of a barrage this one is the divide wall and and this is the direction of flow and you know this is the head regulator of the main canal and this is an off taking canal let's say x is the length of the head regulator of main canal then how much should be the length of the under sluices under sluice portion it should be 1.5 times the x where x is the length of the head regulator of the main canal okay so how much should be the uh, length which we should provide of the under sluice base usually 1.5 times the width length of the head regulator of main canal 
Now, what are the functions of these uh, undersluiced loose bays? So they have very important function. Number one, it allows the formation of silt pocket. So this one is the silt pocket, all right? In front of under sluices. So these are under sluices and, and, and have you seen your pocket? So what is a pocket? Pocket is that in our shirts, uh, which is closed from three sides and open from one side. That is called as pocket. So it is open from this side and it is closed from three side usually and uh, only we allow water from the upper part of the head regulator of the main canal as less silt water should enter into the canal so its first function is of the endless loose is it it forms a silt pocket what happens in the silt pocket it reduces the flow velocities due to which silt deposits in the silt pocket and now uh, you know for several months, the silt is uh, keep on depositing here in the silt pocket and relatively less silt water enters in the canal. Accumulated silt, what is the third function? Yeah. You know, uh, maybe in after nine, ten months uh, of the flowing of this canal, a lot of silt uh, has to be deposited here in the silt pocket. Then these uh, under sluices are used to flush this sediment. And uh, when we do the flushing of the sediments in the closure period, when the gates of this head regulator of the main canal are closed in the you know closure period in January, we don't see water in the rivers, <clears throat> and and then the whole discharge is passed. Then these main bays are closed and under sluice bays gates are open and the whole discharge passes through here so it flushes this deposited sediment maybe of the uh, nine ten months sediment here so these are the three functions of the under sluice bays or under sluices is it clear uh, sir kindly first function for explain kardeng first function Yes, a silt pocket formation of. Yeah, this is silt pocket. Actually, you know, uh, as I mentioned you, uh, our pocket. What is our pocket? To which we say pocket, which is closed from three sides and open yes, from sir. one side. That is pocket. Is that? Yes, sir. So if if these under sluice bays are closed and this is a divide wall and here also uh, its crest is much at higher level so a still so it means for certain level this is also closed so this makes a pocket and as silt deposit inside so this is called as a silt pocket so under sluice bays actually they they facilitate in the formation of a silt pocket okay that's so clear the height of the uh, canal head regulator key Actually, uh, it depends on many factors. What is our pond level, all right, of the barrage? And and then how much we want to uh, we want to convey the charge in this canal. And you know where we have to set the crest level. We need the how uh, the 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 head over the crest should be such that it can pass the design discharge. Uh, I think if you remember uh, the V notch and rectangular notch experiments, so discharge is depend karta hai over the wheel or over the notch is a function of head. Kaha per yes, head? Kaha per head? The notch. On the notch crest of the notch. So this crest hoga na, iska yahan pe koi crest hoga. Cross ke upper, wo jo hamara design discharge hai, so we can compute that how much head we require over the crest of the weir of the head regulator of the main canal. So we head and compute kar lenge. So we have to keep it that this pond level is here. So this is the pond level and we will take it up and we will require this much head. So in this way we fix the crest level, crest level of the head regulator of the weir of the head regulator of the main canal. Okay? 
Yes, sir. Thank you. So, so, so means uh, the crest of this sphere is much higher. So that's why we say that okay, it, this is wall, it, this is one wall, this is second, this is third. So a cell pocket has formed. Okay, now we can go to the next component of the barrage that is the divide wall. As I have shown you, divide walls, huh? In the plan, in the layout. Yeah, here, this is the divide wall. And uh, here, this one is the divide wall. It is provided on up steam side as well as on down steam side. Okay. Now we'd like to see what are what is divide wall and what are its functions. It is a wall which separates the under sluice base from the normal base. So there are under sluice base, there are normal base, and this wall basically separates these two bays. And uh, you know how many of these walls we, we, we have to provide in the barrage? How many? Either one or how many walls we have to provide? So divide two, two or one. OK, if we, if we want to offtake canals from only one bank, then we require only one divide wall. But if we want to offtake canals from both of the banks of the river, uh, then we need two divide walls. OK, and if we want to offtake three canals, then how many divide walls do we need? Two, sir. Two. And if we want to take off seven canals, then how many divide walls do we need? Two, sir. Two, sir. Two by divide. Two se zyada nahi ho sakti, hai na? The divide walls would be two. But how the length of the divide wall we have to compute on the uh, side ATC that we have seen here. Uh, okay, X dash that we will discuss later on. And uh, its length on up steam side sh should be how much? Should be sufficient to keep the heavy turbulence well away from the head regulator of the main canal. So its length should be sufficient. This length on up steam side that the, there should no be, not be heavy turbulence here. And uh, what is. What about its length on down steam side? Its length on down steam side should be sufficient to cover the hydraulic jump and the resulting turbulence. So mainly the function of is that the wide wall is uh, to basically take care of the turbulence. Now on the downstream side, its length should be such that the turbulence which will produce by the hydraulic jump it should take care of that and the length should be such that where the turbulence should reduce much or adequately. All right, so these are about the lengths on the upper steam side and down is the what are the main functions of the divide wall? First function, it separates under sluice base from the normal base. Why? Because they have the different depth of flows. Do you think in normal base, for example, when there are low flows, we close our normal base usually. Or we may close uh, the under sluice base and we may slightly open the normal base. So there is flow on this side, not no flow on that side. But when we want to flush sediments, then we have to close the main bay gates and we open the under sluice base gates. So again, there is difference in head. So in under sluices, the depth of flow would be more and here with very less depth of flow. So as the depth of flow is very less, so to separate these two flows from the normal base and under sluice base, we require a wall and that is called as 
divide wall. <coughs> Main function is to avoid the heavy turbulence, which would otherwise occur due to differential head into sections. And what is the second function? This helps in better silt control by creating a still pond in front of the canal intake. So the wide wall also facilitate us in, in making the silt pocket. And number three, to generate a parallel flow and thereby avoid damage to the flexible protection area of the undersluice portion. Now the next is fish ladder. We have very little time, huh? Excuse me. So Excuse what is this? Hanji? Sorry. Can you explain, can you explain the, the uh, can you explain the previous point, the third one? For the previous previous? Uh, sir, previous means you are talking about the functions of divide wall, the third one, the last one. But uh, last one what do you mean actually, by the Yes, sir. Actually, you know, due to difference in levels, there are flows and the turbulence will produce a lot. And if you will put a, flag, a wall, then what we can do, we can separate these two flows and uh, the flexible apprents, flexible apprents can be protected well. But if the water are mixed, then it is difficult to protect them. Okay, all so right. I, okay, then I think we should stop here. But anyway, these uh, are the uh, essential components of a barrage. And inshallah, uh, if uh, you know the SOPs of the COVID, uh, they allowed us, th they allow us, then we will inshallah uh, visit a barrage as well. Uh, once you should understand these old components and then you should see physically uh, these old components of the barrage, then you can understand in a better way. Okay, I think we should stop here and uh, we went in more details and now I will